Hey, so here's a little example of how I'm using OBS, this free, pretty powerful program to stream my edit and mix for remote clients. Um, I'm probably going to be messing up quite a bit and stuttering. I'm not a professional uh, demonstrator, but hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, so first thing, first, um, basically the signal flow of what I have. Um, for starters, I have Pro Tools outputting a stereo down mix out the optical output of whatever interface you have. I happen to be using an HD Omni and it's working really well for me. Um, I know the 192s, the HDIO, uh, many other third-party interfaces have optical out and you want to set that to uh, SPDIF, not ADAT. So um, just within Pro Tools Um, then also within the bus settings, what you want to do is set your output, optical out, and you'll see that that's set to optical. And then on the bus, here's optical out, and I have it routed to the optical out. Um, so then I also have a down mix. ScreenFlow is a screen capturing software I have, but it's also for screen sharing. Um, so it's a 5.1 uh, bus that I'm down mixing to optical out. So I'll show you over here in Pro Tools. I have all of my um, ingredients basically they all have you know um, master buses and everything each of those 5-1 masters gets sent to that 5-1 down mix and then down at the end here's my mic but I have the 5-1 aux with a down mixer plugin. The input is set to the um, down mix to screen flow 5.1 bus and then the output is set to optical out. So you'll see when I press play. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She never showed. It seems she's disappeared. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. So that's part one with routing um, within Pro Tools and getting the optical audio out. Part two is within your computer. Um, so if you look at my main display of the computer, under the audio settings, my input is set to my optical interface. Um, if you have the older cheese graters, that has conveniently um, an optical in and out. Um, so I literally just patch the Omni, the in and outs, straight to the computer's in and outs, and it works seamlessly. Um, this computer happens to be a newer cheese grater and they got rid of the optical so I have to use a USB interface to get optical. Um, same principle applies. 
So my computer output is also set to an external device so that if I'm previewing stuff in another program using my system sounds, uh, you should be able to hear within you know everything. So here's OBS. Let me see if I can show you just that. You'll see a little bit of a feedback loop uh, visually. Um, it's very cool. So what you can do is set scenes. So here I want the director to see all. You know, here's the edit window. Here's all the stuff to make it look like I'm doing a lot. Um, just the edit window. Just the secondary window. And you can choose specific windows within your display. So here's just the Pro Tools video. And you'll see if I move the cursor over the video window, it'll actually show on screen. Um, I like this one. It's the video window plus 5.1 output. So you can kind of just see the metering. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She never showed. It seems she's disappeared. And then I made one um, just with OBS. So hopefully um, my rambling will make sense of how to set up a scene. So I'll, I'll just make a new scene and see what we can do. So you have to set up your visual and then your sources, audio sources, and you can arrange, that's the cool thing, you can arrange the screen however you like. So I'll just make a new one, a new scene, I'll call it uh, demo. I'm back. So you didn't hear me because my optical was not on, but now it is. So now I'm going to create a visual source. So you can choose a display capture. That'll show the contents of an entire screen. Um, so let's say I want to show my main screen. There it is. Um, this is a 1080 preview, but um, I have 4K monitors, so you'll see that that's kind of um, large. Now there's a setting that I changed that I'm lock preview. I don't want that. If you unlock preview, you can resize position however you like. Uh, it's very convenient. Um, so let's say I wanted just that portion of the screen there. I want it that big. And I also want to add, uh, let's say, this mute omatic plugin that I have, um, which is pretty cool. It mutes my microphone feed as soon as the Pro Tools transport goes um, into any mode other than stop. So you'll see when I press play, my mic will go away. We were. So let's find that. Um, Pro Tools is a little weird with all their coding and they don't make things very user friendly. So you'll see how I have to search for that plugin and it's not too bad. So that's a window capture. We want to use a specific window. Um, so I'll call this mute. And I want to show windows with empty names. Uh, if I don't, you'll see a short list of things. But I want empty names and there's a lot more. So Mute-O-Matic is one of these. Not that one. And it's a little bit of trial and error. But we will get there. We'll find it. Maybe. Of 
course it's the last one. Okay. So then you can position that however you like. And let's say whatever reason I wanted it large. Um, you can do that. Um, if it's overlapping, you could set that window to move up to overlap that screen instead. So this is my demo scene and that's what's going to send out to my live stream. Um, but then just as easily as long as my audio source exists on every one of these other scenes you won't hear a dropout in my audio. But again here's all and these are just scenes that I created beforehand. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She never showed. And here's edit window. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She Secondary display. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She never sh And you'll notice that the audio is direct digital, so you're not getting any line noise, any loss of level. It's just an exact clean signal straight out of Pro Tools. Uh, here's just the video window, and I'm sure you're recognizing the actor that you'll see. It's our friend Riff. We were supposed to meet your sister a few days ago. She never showed. It seems she's disappeared. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I... And you can change the scenes yeah, while it's playing okay. as well. Uh, at this point, uh, we're not sure if she was aware of her father's passing and what he entitled to her. We're all trying to figure out what we can. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that's basically the intro for OBS. Um, let's see, what else am I missing? The settings within OBS, um, if you just go to settings, you'll notice the general ones, you don't really need to mess with those too much. There's, it, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. Um, the output you can use whatever defaults they have. If you want to record, uh, which is what I happen to be doing right now, I'm using this as my screen capture software um, just because I can show the scenes easily. Um, you just say where you want it to save and how you want it to name. Audio sources, I have 48K stereo just so it's sending exactly what Pro Tools is sending out. Um, these devices I selected to have off because I'm specifically choosing right here in the audio mixer what feed I want on specific scenes that I want. And then for video, um, I'm just streaming a 1080 video, so this is scaling my 4K monitors because I resized it on the scene. Um, hotkeys are cool. You can change scenes with macros and all that stuff. Um, I'd love to get more into that uh, for myself one day, but right now I just needed to quickly get some sort of streaming software. And then advanced settings, again, you can dig into this and play with that if you'd like. Um, the stream is going to change depending on how you want to stream. So there's a lot of presets. Twitch is pretty cool, but I think it's open to the public. Um, YouTube I like because you can send a private link or like an unlisted link to your client and um, other people can't just hop on and watch your film. Um, so I have YouTube as mine and when you go to your YouTube account and say go live it will give you the info that you need um, so this happens to be my stream key that it sent uh, so you copy that from YouTube paste it in here and then click OK and you're ready to go so if I if I start streaming um, this is an old 
error. But essentially, once you have the right key and everything is linked and set up, um, you just click start streaming, it goes live, and the delay specifically through the YouTube streaming is only about three seconds, which is really good. Um, so you can kind of get live feedback from your directors or sound supervisors. And um, so, yeah, um, YouTube also has a live chat function. So they can type to you and say, uh, here's a note on, you know, at this time code. And you can type back in YouTube. Um, or if you want to get really fancy, kind of like the ADR stages with like a Source Connect or Skype, you could go above and beyond and route um, their audio feed into your Pro Tools, but you might get a feedback loop um, in order for you to hear, but then you can hook up a mic like I did. Um, you'll see here, you could hook up a mic directly into Pro Tools, have yourself speaking to the client. Um, what I've been doing is having a mic and I acknowledge that I see that the client typed something and I'll, I'll say, okay, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me get to that note now. Let me address it real quick. And um, then you just kind of go through it and you know, that's that. It's, it's not as seamless as you know, in person, but it's kind of nice that you can just be on your own and work as you would on your own and then address their notes when you're ready, which is really nice. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's a different workflow, but it works. And um, I've had a lot of luck with uh, this specific, this feature film. Um, we did a temp dub at Technicolor worked on it some more, COVID happened, and we had to come up with a way to finish this movie. And um, this was great because people who weren't able to get on the lot and we didn't invite to the mix, they were able to give them you know, the invitation to just watch the stream and just kind of feel like they're a part of it. Uh, that This is for an indie film, but you know, big network shows aren't gonna be so, um, generous with that but you know you you could share the link it's unlisted um, so you don't need a password but um, it's not going to be open to the public uh, for every everyone to get on but um, yeah I hope that made some sense and uh, I'll upload this soon and send a link to you to watch this and if there are any questions feel free to ask me um, I'm sure I skipped a few steps, and each system is going to be a little different, but um, the concepts are more or less the same. Uh, so you're just making sure that OBS is capturing your di the display that you want in the arrangement that you want, and that the audio source that you want within each specific scene um, is there, and then basically just click start streaming and you're set. Um, you don't even need this you know, OBS window open for it to, to work. So you can just set it and forget it and just work as you would normally. And um, you know, I, I usually have the um, YouTube chat in my bottom right screen here so I can see any notes that are coming in. But yep, so that's it. Uh, good luck with everything. Again, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. All right.